Hi, I'm taking the, the self-driving car engineering nano degree program at Udacity and I came across a point where I needed to jump in and do some math. What we're trying to do is we're trying to detect the lines on a road to see where the lines are that you have to stay between. So to start off, uh, the first thing we do is we transform the image to grayscale. We do that pretty quickly with an algorithm that's already there. Uh, and you just simply pipe the uh, image into an algorithm and it gives you back a grayscale image. The reason why you want to do that is because in a regular color image, you have whatever size image you're looking at, all those pixels, each pixel has three colors, red, green, and blue, and each color can have a different value from 0 to 255. 255 being the white color and 0 being a black and everything in between. It's quite a lot of processing to do. So if we, if we convert it to grayscale, I believe the numbers go down from 0 to 8 or 0 to 7, giving you 8 different values. So less computational intensive. So the first thing is first, convert it to grayscale. The next thing you want to do is you want to apply this thing called the Gaussian Blur. Now, the Gaussian Blur is nothing more than taking a set of pixels that are next to each other. If you have a grid of pixels, whatever type of blur you want, you can apply this. And let's say your pixel densities are, you know, 5, 6, 6, and uh, 4, or whatnot. What it does is it'll just take the average of those and give each one the same value. So it kind of blurs and blends the colors together. You want this because you want kind of a continuous stream of pixels so that the next pixel will be very similar. And, and the dissimilarity between this set of pixels and that set of pixels will let you edge detect. And that's what the, uh, the candy algorithm does. It detects edges. So it takes the gradient of that set of pixels because you did the Gaussian blur. You have a bigger clump of pixels that are like each other. Well, the next clump of pixels in each direction, if those clumps of pixels are similar to these clumps, then you'll consider that an edge. You're going to start to detect like things that move around like that, you know, uh, and in between because the white is over here and the green, it's going to follow the green because those pixels are going to be related. The average of those pixels are going to be related. And it knows if you go left and right, you're going to get white. Those don't breach the, those breach the threshold that we set that says, hey, if the average of this is five, anywhere in this, if it's uh, anywhere, anywhere between four and six, we'll accept it. You can set those parameters yourself. So after you do the Gaussian blur and the Canny algorithm, and remember the Canny algorithm is the edge detection, the next thing you want to do is find lines. And so line detection is, is a little bit more complicated. So that's the point where it involves math. And let me explain what we're doing here. I'm going to erase this, and we're going to show you something called the Hoff transform. So <clears throat> when you detect the lines, if you imagine uh, you have a bunch of different lines and line segments that we've kind of detected using those first couple of uh, steps, right? How do I know that this is one continuous line, say, from here to here? So instead of these blotches of line segments, how do I know that maybe that's just supposed to be one continuous line? Well, one thing that you can look at when you do this is slope. You say, hey, the slope of all these little points here are about the same, right? So the slope, the rise over run, the direction of that line is about the same. So that's one thing you got to think about is a slope. The next thing is, picture you did have an x-y coordinate system here. So here's your x and here's your y. Where does that slope hit the, the b value? Remember the b value for any y equals mx plus b equation is where it hits the y-intercept or the vertical intercept. So this line here hits the vertical intercept right here at this point p right here. So let's take these line segments, for example, right here, these three right here. If you drew the line all the way through, you'd get slightly different values here, but they're really pretty close, and they all have kind of the same slope. You can measure the slope. So with those two given parameters and thresholds, you might be able to say, you know what, that is supposed to be a continuous line. But you also have to take note of this gap right here. There's a gap between this pixel and then that pixel. How large do you want that gap? That's another parameter you can set in this, this algorithm. Um, but where it hits the b-axis, that's also a parameter. How far along of that b are you willing to accept? Because maybe they are distinct lines. Like this line is definitely different from this line. But I think these lines might be supposed to be connected, right? But their b-values are slightly different. So let's have that uh, an average of some sort as well. But let's talk about the... What we're going to talk about is this thing called the Huff transform. And what we have is an xy coordinate system and you have a single point and you want to transform this point into what they call, well, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's called a Huff transform. So you actually have your slope on one, on your horizontal axis, and you have your B value on the vertical axis. 
So this point here doesn't have a slope because it's a point. Let's deal with lines. Let's say we did have a line segment from here to here, or a line. Um, we can extract a B value and a slope for that, right? So picture this. You have this line here, x, y coordinate system, and if you kept this going down, you'd end up with a B value here, say, we'll call it uh, B1, and then we'll find the slope, rise over run, we'll call that M1, so that's the rise over run, as a slope of that, so it's M1. So we can plot that over here and say that line, that entire line, is nothing more than a point here. So this point of, over here, this M and B, is going to be, well, what's the value of that M? We said it was M1. So if you go over all the way over to M1, that's our point, M1. And then where does it hit the B-axis? It hits it at B1. So our B-axis, if you go over here, is B1, right? So M1 comma B1 is our point. Now why do we want to do something like this to transform? The reason why is because we can't find slopes of, uh, say, vertical lines on the XY coordinate system. What's the slope of that? We can't define that. So we do what they call a Huff transform, H-O-U-G-H, I believe. And that's all it is. It's transforming this to this. However, we're going to also transform our coordinate system. We're going to use uh, polar coordinates instead of xy coordinates. Okay, so now that we have our Huff transform figured out how to go from xy coordinate system to an mb coordinate system, uh, let's let's go ahead and take it one step further and say, you know, we have the slope of that line segment plotted on our Huff transform graph. So if we take all of our little line segments that we've come up with using the other algorithms and the other steps, you'd end up with if you start plotting all of the MB values as you go, you're going to end up with some sort of line on the Huff transform graph. But now you, you, start you start plotting every one of them, and what you'll notice is there is some that will happen to cross in the same exact MB part. So all those line segments that are plotted for every pixel, every set of pixels, you end up with this cross right there. That cross means that they must be they must have the same slope and the same B value, and if they don't reach that gap that we're talking about, that gap parameter, then that means that, that at that point, all of those line segments must be the same line. And you might have multiple. You might have another point here with, that has a lot of crosses. So as you run across your line segment, they start crossing at these points. You know that this point, any one of these Huff lines that crosses at that same intersection, all of those pixels must be part of the same line because they all cross at the same M and B value at some point. A little confusing at first, but I think this kind of clarifies a little bit of uh, how to find a line out of a bunch of line segments.